we're going to move on to 1.6. In 1.5, we did multiplication, so what's really the next thing we can do after multiplication? Division. We're going to do that. So we're going to work on some division here for a little while. And we're going to be dividing into whole numbers. Or, sorry, dividing whole numbers. No fractions yet. What is this homework? No, this is our next section. I'll give you homework at the very end. Really, when we say division, we don't really mean I'm going to take a certain number of items and put three of them here and five of them here and two of them here and six of them here. What we mean by dividing is taking a certain number of items and dividing them equally into groups. Are you with me on that? So we don't want different sized groups, we want the same group. So we are dividing equally into a certain number of groups. You know as a teacher I have a lot of books and I have, I think at home, I got rid of some. So I think I have about 24 books right now that are just on my shelf. And I have six shelves on my bookshelf. If I wanted to put them evenly, I have 24 books. I have six shelves. How many books are going to go on each shelf? Four. Yep, that's a division problem. We took my 24 books, we put them equally on six shelves. We got four books per shelf. Every shelf is going to have at least four books. Just like with addition and subtraction and multiplication, all these things have words, have names to them. Uh, this one right here, the thing you are dividing, the number you are dividing, that's called your dividend. What you're dividing by, that number is called the divisor. Can you say dividend with me? Dividend. Divisor? Divisor. Good. Okay, let's try this one out. Addition had a sum. Subtraction was a difference. Multiplication was a product. Division is a... Starts with a Q. Quotient. Yeah, you're right. And you know what, there's a few different ways that we can represent this problem. We could do just the standard 24 divided by 6, uh, but there are also some other options for us. Oftentimes you'll see it like this. You ever seen that before? That's it. Which number is going to go inside of our division symbol here? 44. First number goes inside, the divisor here is going to go on the outside, and our quotient would go on the top. One last one that we can't have, we can write this as a fraction. 24 <coughs> over 6 means 24 divided by 6. All three of these mean exactly the same thing. So when you see them, don't get intimidated just because there's a fraction here. All it means is take 24 divided by 6 and get 4 out of it. Let's try a few examples just so we get the hang of this, get our brains rolling on division. We'll do some properties, and I think that'll end our day today. Don't shout it out. I want people to think about this. So if you know the answer, great. Just hold to yourself for a second. Firstly, can you name me my dividend? Name me my dividend. Good. Name me my divisor. Nine. And what is our quotient here? Eight. Perfect. Great job. Quotient goes on top. How about this one? What is my quotient in this division problem? Five. Perfect. What's my divisor? What's my divisor in this problem? Four. 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 Good. What's the answer going to be? Our quotient? Seven. Seven. So each of these mean division. We can identify the names of each part. 
and we can do these problems uh, as they are. Now there are some properties of division. One of these is honestly really important for you to get a handle on. I'll talk about it specifically for just a couple minutes. First <coughs> one is this. If you divide a number by itself, any number by itself, what are you always going to get? One. one. Every time. You know what that goes to show you is also, since you said that, every time we see a fraction of a number over itself, what are we going to get? One. one. That's because, well, a whole. It is a whole. It's also a division problem. Four divided by four, that's a whole. What happens whenever we divide a number by one? What are we going to get? It sounds the same number. So whether it's four or any other number, if I divide it by one, I'm going to get that number back again. That's an identity. It's called the identity. By the way, is the reverse true? Can I divide one by four and get four? Mm -hmm. Does it flip around like addition and multiplication do? No. No, it's not commutative. Oh. This and this. are different things. This right here we're going to look at later. We're not there yet, uh, but we will get there. So what this says is that if you have 4 over 1, that's going to be 4. That's a way you can also write a whole number as a fraction every single time. We'll get into that later. Here's the big one. If, you, if you've been sleeping all day, hopefully you haven't been sleeping all day, but if you've been kind of zoning out, this is the part to zone in on, all right? You see, one of these is okay, and one of these things is not okay. One you can have in math, and it's great. The other one you can't have in math, and it's not okay. Here's how I'm going to explain it to you. I want you to think of this as if it's possible or if it's not possible. Think about, the, think about money. Let's say you had zero dollars. You have no money. And you spread it between four bank accounts. How much money is going to be in each of your bank accounts? Zero. That makes sense, doesn't it? If you have no money and you open four bank accounts, you're just going to have no dollars in those bank accounts. Are you, nod your head if you're with me on that. Okay. Now think about this one. You have four dollars and you put it in zero bank accounts. How much is in each bank account? No. Do you have a bank account? No. Then is the question of how much do you have in each bank account even relevant? No. no. Then this one doesn't make sense, does it? Right. This one you can think through, can't you? Yeah. I have zero bucks and four accounts. That's zero per account. I have four dollars and zero accounts. I can't ask the question how many is in each account because I don't even have an account. One of these things is reasonable. This answer is zero. This one, if you've heard it before, is called undefined because you can't do it. That implies two things about fractions for us in the future. It says that if we have zero divided by a number, zero, what's zero divided by a number then? Zero. zero. This one's just fine. If we have a number divided by zero, is this one okay? No. This one is undefined. It doesn't equal zero, it doesn't equal four, it doesn't equal anything, it's just undefined. How many people are clear on that? Raise your hand if you're clear on that. Good. Okay, so today we covered a little bit about area. We did some multiplication of large numbers. We got in on to, uh, to some division, and we're about halfway through division. Next time on Monday, we'll talk about how to divide long numbers, and then we'll wrap up that section. Did you guys understand what we talked about today? Yeah. All right, good deal. So last time, we ended with a little bit of properties of division. We talked about when and when you cannot divide by, oh, if you can divide by zero or divide zero by a number, we found that out. Today we're going to start with long division. We'll refresh your memory on how to do that. Then we'll get on into a couple word problems, not too bad. And then we'll end our day with exponents and order of operations. So that's our plan. Let's get started on some long division. So we'll look at dividing large numbers.
So you know, I know we can divide things like my opening example, if I have 24 books and I'm putting them on six shelves, how many books are going to be on each shelf again? Yeah, because we're just doing 24 divided by 6. And maybe you can do something like 16 divided by 2 and you do that really quick in your head. But sometimes we have these large <coughs> problems that we can't quite do that. For instance, if we did 4,906 divided by, sorry, let's make that an 8. 4,908 divided by 6. Can you do that in your head? Maybe, maybe if you really, if you think about it, you just get set it up and do it in your head. But it take you a long time. You know, you might make some mistakes. So possibly, there's a better way that we can do this. In fact, we found three ways that we can represent division. We had this way, we had this way. Do you remember that way? The fraction root still means division. But the last way we had was this way. Which number went inside for this, this one? Four. 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 Perfect. And we had the six over there, and this set up a method for us to actually divide these, these numbers. What's the way you do that, though? What do we do here? How many times six first or second? Sure, yeah, you're exactly right. We would try the first number, right? We'd say, <coughs> how many times does six go into four? Well, you know what? It doesn't. So we're going to have to say not four, but maybe six goes into 49. And we're talking about how many times it goes in without going over. Great. Who said that? Good job on whoever said it. <coughs> so we have eight. So we check how many times six goes into 49. We got our eight. What do you do with the eight? <coughs> okay. So the six times eight, we get the 48. Perfect. We're going to put it right under the 49. And then what? Just drag. Zero. Yeah, and this is one way you can check your work. The number that you get after subtraction should be less than that number. That's how you know you get it right. If it's more than that number, you didn't pick this one big enough. For right now, we're just divided by six, so it's not that big of a deal, but when you're divided by other numbers, that helps you out. Okay, so we have this one. What's the next thing we do? Zero. Good, very good. And six goes into that number how many times? Cool. We continue this process called the division algorithm. Algorithm just means the steps you go to get somewhere. So here we follow the steps. Now the one gets multiplied by six. We continue to subtract. We bring down that eight. And six goes into 48 how many times? We multiply. We get the 48. We subtract. And we get either a remainder, which we haven't had yet, or we get zero telling us it went in evenly. So this answer, this quotient, is going to be 818. Feel all right with the division so far? All right, let's try a couple more and we'll move on. Okay, let's try this. 7 into 2,128. The first thing we check is 7 into which number, folks? 21. And how many times? Three. We multiply, we get 21. We subtract, wait a second, we get 0. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is actually a really important example for you to see. Pay attention right now. Even if you think, man, I got division down, this is boring. A lot of people make mistakes on this problem right here. Trust me. You got the 0, you do bring down the 2. But well, wait a second. Does 7 go into 2? No. No. If ever, listen, if ever you bring down a number and it still won't <coughs> divide into it, you have to put a 0 up here. You have to do that. If you just leave that blank and you bring down the 8 and then you put a number up there, you're going to be off by a whole bunch. That 0 says, I tried to divide it. It just, it wouldn't divide. There, it wasn't large enough for me to divide. So we put a zero there saying it cannot go into that any amount of times. Are you with me? Nod your head if you're with me on this. You guys in the back over there? Okay. So we, we had the zero. We obviously had to bring down the two. But seven didn't go into two. That's why I put the zero above that two. Now we can bring down the eight. Every time you bring down a number, 
you have to write a number up top. Every time you bring down a number, you have to write a number up top. Clear? Okay. So now we have the 28. How many times does zero, I'm sorry, seven go into that 28? Four. Then we can write our four, we get 28. When we subtract, we get zero, saying it went in evenly. But my main point here is that a lot of people, if they don't know exactly what they're doing, you know what answer they'd give me instead of 304? 34. 34. 34. A lot. I get that all the time. All the time. Also, can you check your work in division? Can you check it? Yeah. How? Multiplying it. Yeah, that's right. So if I multiply these two numbers, it better give me 2,128. And it will. it will. So that's one way you can check it really easily. All right, 4 into 939. So we're going through the process and we go, oh, right, we know how to do this. 4 goes into 9 two times, I'm going to write the 2. I multiply the 4 times the 2, I get an 8. Next thing we said to do is we're going to subtract that so we get the 1. We bring down the 3. We continue our algorithm. 4 goes into 13, how many times? <coughs> 3. We get 12, we subtract, that gives us a 1. We gotta bring down that nine. Four. How many times does four go into nineteen without going over? Four. four. We multiply again, we get sixteen and we subtract, but this time we don't get zero, we get three. Did it go in evenly? No. Now, whenever you get something right down here, this thing's called a remainder. The remainder says that we went in a certain number of times, but it didn't go in evenly, and this is the extra what's remaining from what we after we divide it. So this right here is our remainder. And here's what we're going to do with remainders for right now. In the future, when we get to decimals and when we get to fractions, I'll show you how to do a couple of other things. But for right now, all we have to do is say, okay, 234 was our quotient with a remainder of 3. That's all you got to do now. No extra work at this point. You still with me? <coughs> okay, so the decimal thing and the fraction thing that will come in later time. Okay, I'd like you to try a couple on your own, then move on to a little bit of estimation, and we'll wrap up our section here real quick. So 5 into 3,287, let's do that one, and let's do 81,605. divided by 9. Remember, I'll be walking around. If you need help on this, this division, you really just maybe you forgot how to do it or it never really made sense to you, let me know and I'll try to help you right now, okay? Take some time to do those problems. Did I already pass the roll out?
All right, let's get back to our math up here. We're doing 3,287 divided by 5. The first thing we're checking is, does 5 go into 3? Now, now clearly it doesn't, so we consider the next two digits. 5 goes into 32, how many times? 6. six. So we're doing our 6. We multiply and we get 30. When we subtract, we're going to get the 2. And we follow the process. We're going to bring down that 8. We'll divide again. What are we going to get now? Five. All right. The multiplication is going to give us a 25. We'll subtract. We'll get 3. We'll bring down that 7. 7. Cool. So 7 gives us 35. We subtract. We get 2. So we're going to do anything special with that 2. We're just going to write R2 right next to it, the remainder of 2. Make sure you do that, though. Don't, don't just leave me hanging, because one thing I need to know is that if you know what this little 2 stands for, okay, that it is a remainder. So don't just leave this problem the way it is on your homework or your test. Go up to the top. Just give me this right there, and I'll be happy. How many we got exactly that on the paper? Good deal. Fantastic. Next one. 9 doesn't go into 8, but it does go into 81. 9. We multiply, we get the 81. When we subtract, we get... We bring down the 6, and we go, oh, this was the case that we just talked about. So since 9 doesn't go into 6, it's less than that. Yeah, we're going to put that 0 up top. Do you have the 0 up top? Yes. Not your head if you do. Good. All right. Very good. Yeah. We have to put that 0 there. If you bring down a number, you have to write something on the top. Even if it's 0, that's okay. You have to write something. So we're going to bring down another number. 9 goes into 60. 6. When we subtract, we're going to get the 6. We'll bring down our 5. Yes. Yep, 7 times. We'll multiply and get our 63. And coincidentally, we get a remainder of 2 again. Not sure if you're all right with this division thing. You okay with long division? Good, all right. Very good. We're not going to go over any specific problems, but remember, you can estimate with division as well. So if someone asked you, <coughs> this problem, and they wanted an exact answer, you can actually tr get most of the way through it by estimating. For, for instance, if, if you set this up, I mean, 670, that's a big number to try to divide. It's not going to go into 3. It's not going to go into 33. It's not going to go into 332. And it's going to go into 3,328. But I'm not too good. I don't know about you. I'm not too good at multiples of 678. But I am pretty good at multiples of 700. Aren't you? Do you see what I'm saying? So round it to 700 for now and estimate. OK. <laughs> if I don't know how many times 678 goes into 3,300 or whatever, Maybe I know how much 700 goes in. So we do 700, 1400, 2100, 2800, 3400 is too big. Now it may very well be that, but this gives you an idea that it's either 4 or 5 up top without doing a whole lot of math work out, outside of your head. Are you with me on this? So you can estimate there. Let me show you what would happen. If we put a 4 over here, so I use 700 as my estimate, I'm going to get my 32. We're multiplying. We're getting 28, 29, 30, 31. I'm going to get 24, 25, 26, 27. Did they do it right? Someone else get the same thing? I hope I did. Did you? So we have that right. 616 is less than 678. Now, let's say you had done this and you had gotten a number big, bigger than 678. Right there, that would tell you that what you have up top is not big enough. You raise it by one, and then you redo the math. But the estimate will save you a lot of time rather than trying to really think of this stuff. Some people understood what I just talked about. You OK? Still feeling kind of? Okay, let's see how we can apply this to real life. 
You know, if you're a, a company, every single day, you, maybe you make something. I think in my example is we're going to make hamburgers. Do you like hamburgers? I love hamburgers. They're so good. <clears throat> Buy me some hamburgers. Let's say you're making hamburgers. You're a hamburger business. Are you going to make enough patties to fill boxes that it's going to be exactly the same, exactly fill a box and be done that day? Well, maybe not. Maybe you know you can make like 358 patties a day. That's your job. You make 358 patties a day. It's perfect. Your machine makes that every time. But you only box patties in boxes of 12. So these are like those large patties that you get, those extra big ones. So if you box or bag patties in packages of 12 and you make 358 patties a day, you might want to know how many patties you're going to have extra so that the next day you can start on that amount again. So you can you know how much profit you're going to make, you know how much inventory you're sending out and how much revenue you're getting back. Are you with me on this? So let's go ahead and let's do the example. You make 358 hamburgers a day. package them in bags of 12. What I want to know is this. I want you to do this on your own. I want to find out how many bags of hamburgers you can make every day and how many you have left over to start with the next day. We're just going to freeze them, we'll put them in the bags tomorrow, and finish off a bag and start, start fresh. Okay with that? So I want to know how many bags of hamburgers you can make in a day, and how many are left over. Just do this on your own. If you know it already, don't say it out loud. We'll let everyone work on it. Hey, how are we going to figure out question number one? How many bags per day? What are we going to do there? Sure, because we're grouping, right? And division means we're grouping evenly. And so we're going to take those 358 burgers, we're going to try to group them evenly in bags of 12. So that, that's a division problem. That's how we introduce division. So for our first part, we're going to do that. We'll take our 358, we'll divide it by 12. And we'll work through it. So 12, 12, you got a 2, right? Mm -hmm. How many times does 12 go into 118? Nine. Nine times? Okay. We got 29 with the remainder of 10. Okay, so we can answer both questions now. How many bags did we produce in a day? How many? 29 bags. How many burgers are left over so that tomorrow we can start on, our, on this process again? 
So in this case, our remainder is what actually the question was asking. How many burgers do you have left over? That way tomorrow, someone just has to make two burgers, throw them in the bag, and send it out. So we got 10 burgers left that are going to be started on tomorrow. And here's the question. Another question is, you make $3, uh, you make, what's a burger bag about? $16 maybe? $12? Let's say you make $16 per bag. These are, these are good burgers. <laughs> they must be. They're good. <laughs> Seriously good burgers. You make $16 per burger. I'm sorry, per bag. <laughs> That'd be crazy, per burger. You make $16 per bag you send out. Find out how much you make every day. Go you make $16 you can for what? Per bag. You make $16 per bag that you've created. So find out how, many, how much money you just made today. dollars per bag. How many bags did you make? <coughs> 29 bags. Each of them is worth how much? 16. 16. So notice we're taking either 16 plus 16 plus 16 plus 16 plus 16, 28 <coughs> times, or we can multiply it because that's repeated addition. What did I say? Geez, I'm short with 16 bucks. I'm going to get fired. There goes my job. Okay, yeah. yeah, we are multiplying. We have the 29 bags. We've got $16 per bag. How much did you get? 464? 464? 464? 464 what? He's made $464 making burgers. Sounds pretty good to me. Now, of course, this is going to change every day, isn't it? Because the next day, you're going to start with 10 burgers already. And so the next day, maybe make a little bit more uh, than, than you did today. So that will change every day. But for today, we made $464. How many people feel OK with this long division and this word problem we just did? Raise your hand. Good. The last thing that we need to talk about in our section is something called an average. Have you ever heard of an average before? What's it mean? What's an average mean? An equal amount of a certain amount of figures. Be more specific. What? Well, say like you have. Or use it in context. Give me something that you've heard about you averages. Buy, there's 10 houses out there, and there's a range of prices. And you want to figure out what the price most people pay for those 10 houses. So you add them up. And since there was 10 of them, you would divide it by 10, and that so, would be your average. So the average means, I, I like what you said, what most people would pay for a house. The average is like the most common value that you have in a group of numbers. So for instance, if I said, uh, if I said this to you, what's the average height for guys? Are you going to say 7 foot 2? What's the average height for guys? Average height is Shaq's height, man. Is that, is that right? Average means what most people are. That's what average means in that case. Average price would be what most prices are. You've heard of maybe the median household cost or something? Right. Median means the middle. It's a type of average. Today we're going to learn about the arithmetic average, uh, how to figure out that. that. It's called the mean, uh, M-E-A-N. So it means the arithmetic average. So what we mean by average is what's in the middle most times or what most people pay or what most people are, what most things are, it's really called the central tendency. What's the center of the data? Uh, in statistics, you'll, you'll learn that. If you, if you get the statistics, I hope you do. Like uh, sports teams, like if there's like 10 games and they go uh, five and five, it's like an average 500. Or sure, yeah, sports is great with averages. Oh, I mean, yeah. they're all about averages. Batting average, you ever heard of a batting average? Yeah, if you have a batting average of like 400, you're doing pretty good, right? ERA. Yeah, ERA, that's an earned run average. Uh, they have all sorts of averages, points per game average. Uh, that's how they rank kind of offenses, defenses, and football a lot of times. But the, the, the idea of our average I, 
idea of our average, I'll say it, say it one way, it's the center of our data. The data just means the information that we have. So you can think of it as like the center or what most things are. Now the next thing is how do we find an average? And a couple people have already explained how to do it, but I want to write it out for you so that you know. How you find the average that we're talking about is the arithmetic average. The arithmetic average is you take all the values that I give you, you add them up, and then you divide by the number of values you added. I'll rewrite that and then I'll explain it. So how to find the average? You add all the numbers. You know what, I'm going to use a different word than numbers, sorry. I'll say you add all the values, we make things a little less tricky later. You add all the values, and then you're going to divide by the number of values you added. values, then divide by the number of values you added. We can't make it a little more concise than this. If we use fraction notation, what you're doing is you're taking the sum and you're dividing by number of values. So we're going to do one example together. <clears throat> do you know how they do drug testing? I don't mean what you... <laughs> Not that type of drug testing. Not, what do they call that stuff now where kids just go into their parents' cabinet and take a handful of drugs and pop them in their mouth to see what happens? You heard of that? Farming. I think it's called farming. Like P H A R farming. Because they go, oh yeah, let's see what uh, this and this do. It's super dangerous. Please don't ever do that. That's just so crazy. You're, you're going to die. Um, well, maybe not. But it could sure change your Anyway, that's not what we're talking about here. You, you, whatever. Uh, what we're talking about is when they go out and they clinically test a drug, what they do is they have. A group of people like you would be my group A people. Yeah. And you would be my group B people. And assuming there's equal number of you, you guys listen back there? Okay, because you're distracting me. Um, you would say, okay, group A people, I'm going to give you something called a placebo. Do you know what a placebo is? Placebo is a sugar pill that you say, oh, I'm giving you drugs. And you go, oh, okay, I think this is drugs. And you take it, but it's really nothing. So I'm tricking you. But actually, your, your mind kind of tricks your body itself, and you can actually develop side effects from getting nothing. Your mind is that powerful. You people, so I'm telling you both you're getting the drug. You, I give nothing, just a sugar pill, and you think you're getting the drug. You people, I'm actually giving the drug, okay? And so you, the side effects you have are just from your head. Like, you're just making that stuff up, basically. You might think you have it, but it's really just uh, psychosomatic. It means you're making it up in your head. You people are getting the, the actual drug. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if you're having any side effects. Like, is your hair changing color? Are you itchy? Stuff like that. I don't know. And I'm going to rate that on a scale, and I'm going to compare it to what you say your side effects are. Because if your side effects and your side effects are exactly the same, then there's no side effects. Right? Because the placebo people had the same stuff just from their, their own mind. If you had way more side effects than them, I know the drug has, definitely has some side effects. You kind of get the idea. So this is what happened in a certain drug trial. Drug trial. They gave <coughs> drugs to these people. There was uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There was eight of them. Sorry, seven of them. And they rated their reaction on a scale of 100 uh, as, as far as this one category was concerned. 
Uh, so it, it's either something like, did it give you a headache? How bad was your headache? And here's what people say. So they rated their headaches on a scale from 1 to 100. And the first person said, you know what? It gave me just the slightest headache. Next person said, mine was a little bit worse. Next person said, I had a pretty decent headache. Next person said, um, not too bad, but there was something. Next person was also not, not that bad, a little bit less. Then some guy said, I mean, I might have a headache, just a little, little twinge, nothing. And then this guy was like, my head's kind of throbbing. Okay, so he had a pretty good headache. A hundred be, would be like a migraine. Like, you just can't do anything. Your head hurts that bad. What's the numbers for? The numbers are the, the scale about which people rated their headache in reaction to this one drug, okay? So I gave you placebo, I gave you guys the drug, and you all came back and I picked seven of you and said, how bad's your head hurt right now? You go, out of 100, you go, a three. Or if you had a really bad headache, you go, a 56. Did you kind of get the idea? So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what the average headache was for this group of people. How we find the average is we're going to add up all the levels of our headache. So we're going to add the 4, 7, 35, 16, 9, 3, and 56. We're going to add those together first. So finding the average. I want to know what is 4 plus 7 plus 35 plus 16 plus 9 plus 3 plus 56. We have to add all of that stuff up. Did you add it? Did you guys add it too? Yeah. Okay, keep working on it. If you're still adding, it's fine. I'm going to fill the bottom part out in just a second. I want to work on the top part first. Okay, how much did you add? To, how much did you get when you added it? What was the sum? One thirty. Anybody else get one thirty? Yeah. All right. Good. So when we added all those headache values together, we got one hundred thirty. Now, an average says after you add everything, you're going to divide by the number of values you added. Can you tell me how many values did we add in this case? Good. So we're dividing this whole thing by 7. So right now, we're just going to take 130. We're going to divide by 7. How much? 18 point. OK. So oh, we have a decimal, don't we? We should change these. With the remainder of four? I'm going to change our, our problem here real quick. Sorry. This guy had a really bad day. Let's make it 134. My bad. We haven't gotten to the decimals yet, so I can't make you do decimals yet. This should work out, right? Huh? Dang it, what did I do wrong? Uh, no, no, no. The first one, I got 124. I just did it like three times. Seriously? Yeah. yeah. 124? The first one. First one. I got 124. Yeah, I just did it like three times in a row. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's check the map. What was the remainder the first time? It was two? Oh, four. 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 Maybe that headache should have been 61. <laughs> I guess well, we can make it whatever we want. Sure. Check it anyway. Does 130, 135 divide by 7? Okay, hang on. Yeah. 
went the wrong way. Uh, 52. Do that one. Sorry about that, guys. I must have written some of those problems, those numbers down wrong. It should come out even now, right? Yeah. All right, good. Yeah. So my apologies. So we had a headache of 52 then instead of 56. His headache got better miraculously. So we have 126 divided by 7. We get out of that exactly 18. Here's the thing I want you to know about averages. Please look at the board. Yeah, we kind of I screwed the numbers up a little bit. Sorry, no big deal. It happens. Uh, but I want you to notice something. Our average is 18. Is 18 anywhere in our headache range? It doesn't have to be for an average. This is just saying that if you were given the drug, what we're expecting to happen is you're going to get a headache, and it's going to be about an 18 out of 100. Some people had less, some people had more, but it averages to an 18. Do you understand the idea of an average? So that's what they would, they would use that as. How many people, besides the fact that I had to change numbers, understand about the average, feel okay about it? Good, very good. Okay, the last thing we're going to do today is I'd like to introduce the concept of exponents. Then we'll be done up after that. The exponents is going to lead us to orders of operations, which we'll cover on Wednesday. Do we have one today or not? Just so you know, the answer to that question, almost always, yeah. Almost always. Just because if you don't have an assignment due, I'm still going to give it to you. So you'll, still, you'll have something to work on every day. Maybe not, it, won't be, it might not be due the next day, but it does something. Thank you.